This Focus on Health segment is brought to you by Aurora Healthcare. Hello and welcome to Focus on Health. I'm Ted Stefaniak. Today we're at the Aurora Medical Center in Oshkosh. We're in the pulmonary function department. Now I'm standing in front of a treadmill and no, I will not be getting on it today, but it is one of the tools used to help diagnose exercise-induced vocal cord dysfunction. And that's the topic today as we talk to Dr. Anita Geller-Ragoni. We've, we've talked about this in the past, but this is a little bit different. What is exercise-induced vocal cord dysfunction? Well, when we think about the vocal cords, we think of them as producing speech for us, in, but also they help to allow air into the lungs and monitor air coming in and out of the lungs. So in vocal cord dysfunction, what happens is instead of the vocal cords opening when we breathe in, they actually can close as we're breathing in, opposite of what we would expect to happen, which is why it's also called paradoxical vocal fold motion. We call it vocal cord dysfunction. It's easier to understand. It makes more sense. But what, that's what's actually happening in this scenario. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we've heard of exercise-induced asthma, mm -hmm. uh, vocal cord asthma. Now, is that a different problem? Yes, it's very different actually, but it's often vocal cord dysfunction with exercise is often mistaken for asthma and often people aren't responding to the treatments and, and that's when they'll be seen by somebody like me because they're not responding to what we would normally treat exercise induced asthma with, um, which would be inhalers. Um, the difference mainly is that with exercise induced vocal cord dysfunction, they will often feel like it's hard to catch their breath and it's often early in the activity versus asthma, which tends to be later on in the activity or at rest. Um, also, they might notice that it, it's out of proportion to their normal level of activity where normally maybe it's a marathon runner that could run a full marathon and now they're having trouble even doing a couple miles. Yeah, and I, I know you've done some running, you're, you're a runner, and I've coached some basketball, and I've had situations where the kids all of a sudden can't breathe, and the mm -hmm. parents say, you know, well, this our kids never had asthma before, what, what's going on? And many times it, it's exactly what you're talking about with the exercise-induced vocal cord dysfunction. Mm -hmm, that's true, and actually that's a good point, because what often happens is uh, if it's exercise-induced vocal cord dysfunction, it can be very alarming, and it, they'll sometimes pull the person out of the game if it's a basketball game, or they'll stop the race if it's a track meet, and it's alarming to everybody around them, often causing emergency room visits, or some people just stop the activity altogether because it's so uncomfortable. Um, versus, like you mentioned, with exercise-induced asthma, if it's truly asthma, uh, they often have had issues with asthma-like symptoms before, maybe viruses that settled into their lungs, or they have allergies or allergy-induced breathing difficulties. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you're going through that, you mentioned how alarming it is. It is. It's, it's scary, mm -hmm. especially when it's a, it's a younger kid that, that's having trouble breathing. Is there something we can do immediately if it is exercise-induced uh, vocal cord dysfunction? Is there something that we can do to help alleviate the problem? Yes. So um, there's a few things I'll teach people. One is that they can take a quick sniff. So by taking a quick sniff, it actually helps to relax the vocal cords or open the vocal cords. Um, also, just breathing in through their nose, we call it belly breathing, where you try to breathe in through your nose, allowing your stomach to come out, and then breathing out with your lips pursed. Um, so that's one of the breathing techniques, so in through the nose and out through pursed lips that can also help to alleviate the symptoms. Um, I'll also often use an inhaler that they could take. I try to have athletes do that before the event, but I'll have some people use it acutely and that can help too. Yeah. It's a different type of inhaler than is used for asthma though. Right, but with the breathing techniques, it's helping to relax the vocal cord then? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. now if you go through something like that, if, you're, if you or your child experiences something like that, it's good to alleviate the problem, but probably a good idea to get into your doctor to, to get it checked out to make sure it's nothing more serious. Yes, I think that's important because the symptoms of vocal cord dysfunction can be very diverse and can present in many ways, um, similar to many other things that we see. So asthma or heart problems, you know, they might experience chest pain. Uh, so yes, I think it's important that they have a full evaluation and, and rule out that truly do the um, necessarily testing to make sure it's not asthma. Yeah. How, how is that diagnosed? Um, so what I usually do is I go through a very detailed history um, and figure out when are their symptoms 
um, and what alleviates them. And then we also will often do something where they'll run on a treadmill, which, and then I'll actually look at their vocal cords. So I'll have them actually run on the treadmill, and then I look at their vocal cords with this um, laryngoscope, we call this, and it's a very small uh, tube with a camera at the end that we're able to put through the nasal passage, and then it'll view the vocal cords. And I'll do it right after they get off of the treadmill. So when I have them run on the treadmill, I'll have them run until we can elicit the symptoms they have during their activity. Yeah. And if there is a problem, uh, what is typically a treatment? Uh, so the breathing exercises like we talked about to help with the acute needs, but then uh, speech and language pathology often also works with me. And they'll do some coaching, uh, helping them to both prevent the acute events, but also to help get them through the events when they have them. They'll actually have the individual run on a treadmill or run up and down stairs and then watch them breathe so they can help um, them manage these episodes. Yeah. Uh, it, it's always amazing to me. Uh, you could just be having a great game playing. You've never experienced it before, but it all of a sudden happens. Do we know what is actually triggering these episodes? Uh, well, s for some people it can be anxiety related. So um, you'll often see this in young athletes, high school, they're really trying to work hard in the game. It's you know high stakes game for whatever mm -hmm. reason and stresses them out and then they'll have an attack. But for some people, they have some underlying issues. You know, up to half of the people with exercise-induced vocal cord dysfunction do have also exercise-induced asthma. Um, so if they have that, which can make it harder to breathe, and then this is on top of it, it can really exacerbate the attacks. Um, if they have allergies and they have a lot of post-nasal drainage, that can irritate the vocal cords, as well as heartburn or gastroesophageal reflux coming up and irritating the vocal cord area. So we treat all of those things. Yeah. Um, a lot, lot of things going on or, or could be going on, so mm -hmm. I guess best to get in to see uh, your doctor. Is it, is it best to go through your primary care physician or, or can we make an appointment with you right away? You can make an appointment with me right away. I'm happy to work with individuals through their primary care or if they feel more comfortable just coming to our clinic, they can certainly call and make an appointment for this. All right, yeah, it is scary when it happens, mm -hmm. so uh, it's best to find out what's going on. We appreciate you taking some time with us today. Thank you, Todd. Good to see you again. <laughs> now, if you have any questions regarding exercise-induced vocal cord dysfunction or the asthma that Dr. Geller talked about, you can always give her a call here at Aurora at 303-8700. I'm Ted Stefaniak, and we'll see you next time on Focus on Health. This Focus on Health segment has been brought to you by Aurora Healthcare.